Good morning. Welcome to the Aaron Shores channel. Today I want to talk to you about processed food and ultra processed food. If you're a child or a middle school student or an adolescent or a high school student, talk to your parents about this. You can show them the video. In the 1950s, these industrial food companies worked with agriculture and the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the FDA and this eventually led by the 1970s for over 10,000 chemical additives to be legal to add to food in the United States. Now, the foods that I'm talking about are sold in bags and boxes in the middle of a grocery store in the aisles. The real food at a grocery store is around the outside. We're talking about vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds and fish and meat and chicken and dairy. Okay, those were foods 10,000 years ago, a thousand years ago, and they're still real foods today. Unfortunately, to get the original heirloom varietals, you're probably going to have to buy organic. And for example, a good oil to cook with would be butter or ghee, or olive oil, or avocado oil, or MCT oil. What are <clears throat> so-called vegetable oils are actually ultra-processed, refined seed oils that go through many dozens of industrial processes. And the problem with them is they turn into trans fats that clog your arteries and cause heart disease when you eat them or deep fried food in them. Nearly every restaurant cooks with canola oil or Wesson oil or some industrial seed oil because it's cheap. But if I was to implore you to avoid two things in your diet, it would be so-called vegetable oils and sugar or added sugar. If you are going to buy a food that has an ingredients label, flip the box over and read the ingredients. If sugar is in one of the ingredients, that is an ultra processed food. If there's artificial color, artificial flavor, or chemical synthetic ingredients that are hard to pronounce, if it comes in a colorful bag or a colorful box with strange claims on the package or graphics or images of animals or anthropomorphized animals to appeal to market to children, those are ultra processed foods. Now I'm gonna call out a couple in particular that are wildly popular. An Oreo cookie or a Coca-Cola is just fine to eat if you only have one per month or a couple per month. And if you're an active child or an athletic young adult, those nutritional impacts of a high glycemic index sugar like soda pop or fruit juice or sugary snacks won't really harm your endocrine system or cause gallbladder disorder or cause mitochondrial dysfunction and turn into type 2 diabetes or cancer or heart disease or stroke or clot or embolism or all the hallmarks of diseases of civilization from eating junk food, fast food, high glycemic index, bread, rice, pasta made from white flour that turns into blood sugar. Let's be perfectly clear. Starches and carbohydrates, once they hit the bile and acid in your stomach, are quickly turned into blood glucose. And if the blood glucose cannot be uptaken into all the cells of the body, it goes to the liver, the other cells. It goes to the liver and it causes non-alcoholic fatty liver disorder. After that, we have pre-diabetes, then diabetes. This is also often accompanied by obesity or unwanted weight gain. It is also followed by, once the obesity sets into a certain point, an elevated risk of clotting, stroke, embolisms. These are not pleasant. Uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, ADD, ADHD, sleep disorders, kidney failure, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, digestive problems, irritable leaky gut syndrome. <clears throat> the thing that's missing from most people's diets is fiber. I'm talking about dietary fiber, soluble and insoluble fiber. And you get a lot of natural fiber from an apple or celery or non-starchy leafy greens or carrots or turnips or rutabaga or Brussels sprouts or nuts or seeds. Okay. You can get a lot of dietary fiber if you eat real food. You can get healthy fat 
from dairy if you buy whole milk yogurt or whole milk. Don't buy skim milk or fat-free. They're removing the healthiest part. That's our kitty meowing because she thinks mommy's home, but that's not true. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are at least a hundred doctors on YouTube and the ones that come to mind are Robert Lustig talking about how sugar is evil. Now sugar itself is not poisonous unless it's in excess. If people were to use sugar as a seasoning, like a teaspoon of honey in a large salad for five people, there's absolutely nothing wrong with sugar in small amounts. But if you, if you go to Starbucks and get a Frappuccino, it has 39 grams of sugar. Or if you get a vanilla milkshake at a coffee shop that has coffee in it, it can have up to 100 grams of added sugars. Or if you go to McDonald's and get a large milkshake and have 160 grams of added sugar. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with glazing nuts with a small amount of sugar, you candy nuts on your stovetop and add it to a dish for flavor. If you're going to put it in a cruciferous vegetable dish to add some crunch in your salad with romaine and arugula, you know, and look, I, I'm not here to give advice either. I'm not even telling you what to eat. You can scarf down Kentucky Fried Chicken, Pizza Hut, hamburgers, uh, you know, whatever you want. You can eat whatever you want. Nobody tells you or makes you eat anything. But I am warning you that it's dangerous to consume excess sugar, especially if you're not getting enough fiber. If, if you don't have enough fiber in your body, fiber is the substrate in our lower intestine and colon where our microbiome lives that helps us break down food. And it lower when we eat carbohydrates with fiber, like in a lettuce, that slows down the glycemic index. Well, what is the glycemic index? It's a measure of how food raises our blood sugar. So sucrose made of glucose and fructose, that has a, a glycemic index of 100. Okay, so it's gonna, when you, when you put sugar in your mouth, if you were to take a teaspoon of white sugar and put it in your mouth, you're gonna get about 15 grams or so of sugar or five grams, I don't, it depends on how, if it's a heaping teaspoon or not. Okay, five grams, it depends if it's a level even one. If you put the sugar in your mouth, your saliva is gonna dissolve the sugar and that it's gonna hit your gastric system and it's gonna turn into a runny liquid when it's mixed with bile and hydrochloric acid. And that's gonna go right through the membranes in your small intestine and enter your bloodstream. And if you have too much sugar for your body's carrying capacity, which is gonna be very different for a three-year-old human and an 85-year-old human or an active 20-year-old human or a sedentary 54-year-old human, the same amount of sugar is going to affect people differently. If you gave a standard serving of wine to a five-year-old, they're going to have a very significant effect. If you give a standard serving of wine to a 22-year-old athlete who runs marathons, they probably won't feel anything. If you give a standard serving of wine to someone who's 52 who's used to drinking wine, they probably won't feel anything. If you give a standard serving of wine to a very old person, they might feel something because they have re reduced kiver, uh, liver and kidney function. Okay, so the same wine has different effects based on our body size, our age, our gender. I'm not giving one size fits all advice here and I'm not telling anybody to do one thing or the other, although I would tell you to avoid alcohol because it causes brain damage, kidney damage, and dehydration. It also causes people to make bad decisions and make errors while they're driving, which harm, hurt, and kill, and paralyze, and maim other people. So alcohol is generally a bad idea to consume. It's a neurotoxin, but excess sugar is also a neurotoxin. And if you think that fruit juice, because it's high in fructose and low in sugar is good, you're wrong. It's just as bad as soda pop. So I'm talking about candy, baked goods, ice cream, at least with ice cream, you could, if you made it at home, reduce the um, added cane sugar and put some stevia and xylitol and just not sweeten as much and use organic heavy cream and real vanilla. And you could make like a delicious and some organic egg yolks. You could make a really delicious custard vanilla ice cream. And I do that at home. That's low in sugar and high in cholesterol and saturated fat. Because if it's low in sugar and it's low glycemic index, then fat and cholesterol are great for you. So the misnomer in American food science, and you're gonna hear this on other YouTube channels, is that 
saturated fat is bad. Well, it is bad if it's combined with a high blood sugar from the carbohydrate. So if you eat carbohydrate and sugar and saturated fat, then it's going to increase your blood triglyceride and low density lipoproteins. And that's bad because it increases risk for stroke, clot, embolism, and heart disease. And it makes people fat. And then once they're fat, they're sick and they don't feel well, it causes inflammation and pain in the joints and muscles, causes lethargy, tiredness, makes people not want to do anything. It robs them of their health. A lot of Americans and people who have adopted a Western diet spend the last 30 years of their life sick with, with poor mobility, ulcers on their feet, joint damage in their knees, hips, and ankles. They can't really walk very far. They run out of breath walking up a small flight of stairs. Their cardiovascular system's in the toilet. And we can trace all of this to two cultural phenomenons in industrialized countries that we've brainwashed people through content and, and globalized through content is sitting around watching TV, and that includes on the computer as the internet content, Amazon, Prime, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. It includes playing video games, which is sitting around. It includes sitting around reading books. It includes not going for a walk. This is called sedentary, sitting too much. And if you read AARP magazine, which is mailed out to older people in the United States, it talks about sitting diseases. So what happens when you sit a lot is the blood pools up in your legs because you're not moving and pumping it around. And that increases the risk of stroke, clot, and embolism in the legs, but it also increases the risk of uh, clots elsewhere in the body because the circulatory system is moving blood everywhere. But if you have a bunch of stagnant blood in your legs, it's part of your circulatory system, and those low-density lipoproteins can coagulate in the arteries and veins in the legs and then trans be transported to somewhere else where they cause an aneurysm or something terrible, like a heart attack. Okay, so... Why do we have an epidemic rise in diabetes, heart disease, and cancer? The answer is fat-free food. What did they do to fat-free food? They add sugar. They add artificial in chemicals. Artificial chemicals like artificial dye and artificial sweeteners and artificial flavors are derivatives of petrochemicals, um, insecticide, fungicide, herbicide, um, chemical weapons. These are the same kinds of chemical manipulation and witchcraft techniques that um, despicable evil corporations and greedy sickos engaged in to design chemical weapons. That's where artificial colors and artificial uh, food additives, they're not added to make people healthy. They're added to increase the profit margin by stabilizing the product so it has a longer shelf life. So if the food comes in a bag or a box with a colorful label and more than four ingredients and at least one that you can't pronounce, that's an ultra-processed disease-causing food. And where they've been adopted in India and China, they have an obesity epidemic with children under the age of 25 in India and China who are both sedentary and eating a Western diet. When the epidemiologists went and studied Aboriginal people, when they eat the Aboriginal diet of bush meat and, and wild vegetables and berries that are seasonal, they have no diabetes, no tooth decay, no cavities, no heart disease, and no cancer. As soon as they adopt the Western diet, the industrial diet of the European people that live in Australia, so the non-indigenous food diet, the Westernized diet, they become sick with heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, more clots, more strokes, more embolisms, um, dementia, Alzheimer's, ADD, ADHD, kidney failure. I mean, pretty much you can guarantee if you want to die early and have the last half of your life filled with painful disease, drink lots of soda pop, lots of fruit juice, eat donuts and candy, eat this three times a day, Guzzle it down until your blood sugar is 700. Try to keep your blood sugar elevated as much as possible. And in no time, you'll feel like crap and not like doing anything. And I can guarantee you, if you continue eating sugary carbohydrates with no fiber, no healthy fats, and you cook in refined vegetable, so-called vegetable oil, then you'll be sure to suffer all of the diseases of civilization that eating like an American. It's called the standard American diet, or SAD. If sad doesn't tell you what, it, it's sad. It's sad because it robs people of their mobility and their wellness and it makes them sick. And this was a deliberate action. This is a $700 billion a year industry 
They spend hundreds of millions of dollars a month on marketing and advertising for high glycemic index junk foods and garbage foods. And high fructose corn syrup is not the same as sucrose. You'll see that on packages or in advertisements. Sucrose is fructose and glucose, okay, chemically. It's a six carbon and a five carbon and it breaks down. The liver is the only thing that can metabolize fructose. High fructose corn syrup is made from genetically modified corn that's not even edible. It's a special type of corn that's refined to make HFCS, high fructose corn syrup. Well, it's high in fructose. So when you drink a soda pop that's sweetened with fructose, it overwhelms your liver and causes non-fatty liver disorder and obesity, and then all the diseases associated with chronic inflammation like heart disease, joint pain, arthritis. Literally, you can trace all of these cancers back to the cell's mitochondria. So now we're gonna do a primer on biochemistry. When you breathe in air, it contains mostly nitrogen, but the oxygen is two oxygen molecules with an unbound pair of electrons. When you breathe it in and it enters your bloodstream, it goes to your cells, it sticks to the iron in the hemoglobin of the red blood cell, and it gets transported to your cells. At the cell, at the cell membrane, those electrons enter as hydrogen plus ions exit, and they form water and CO2 that you pee out and breathe out. That's why we breathe in oxygen and breathe out CO2. Well, once those unbound electrons are in the cell, they go to the powerhouse, the mitochondria, and the mitochondria uses those unbound electrons to facilitate the conversion of adenosine diphosphate to adenosine triphosphate, or ADP to, ADP to ATP. That is how we make energy in all of our cells. But if we eat chronically high amounts of added sugar, by the time we're 30 or 40, we'll end up overweight with diabetes and high blood pressure. And if we continue doing it, we end up with chronic inflammation and heart disease, and it can turn into cancer. Now, let me explain something. Cancer, contrary to what most oncologists think, is a metabolic disorder of the mitochondria. So let me say that again. Cancer is caused by mitochondrial dysfunction from chronically elevated blood sugars. And chronically elevated blood sugars are also toxic to your brain. So a lot of people have dementia, mental fog, memory problems, Alzheimer's. That's from a chronically elevated blood sugar from eating starches and carbohydrates and added sugars. So again, if you buy food in a colorful bag or box and eat lots of it, it will cause diseases. And that's been known in physiology and medicine for more than 45 years. But the industrial food processing companies actually said this. If people didn't buy soda pop, we wouldn't sell it. If people didn't buy candy, we wouldn't manufacture it and sell it. If people didn't buy Oreo cookies, we wouldn't manufacture them and sell them. So you know who has the power? You do. When you're at the grocery store, buy whole, natural, organic fruits vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Avoid starchy. You can have starchy vegetables, but really go for the cruciferous vegetables and the non-starchy greens, and you can eat as much of those as possible, and they have a little bit of carbohydrate. And when you're cooking in an oil, you choose butter, olive oil, ghee, uh, avocado oil, MCT oil, uh, apricot kernel oil. You don't, you do not consume what, if it says vegetable oil, Wesson oil, or canola oil, or if it's, if it's less than $5 a bottle, don't use it. That's garbage. You want to use high-quality, organic, natural oils that come in a dark green or dark brown bottle to, to prevent, or butter, okay? I love butter. You know, the French people eat tons of butter, and they don't have heart disease because they don't have a high-sugar diet, okay? And they move more. So this is a two-part thing. Movement burns sugars in your muscles. When someone's on a bicycle riding for three hours, they're going to burn through their blood sugar. If someone eats a sugary meal and then sits and watches a movie, their blood sugar is going to elevate and stay elevated, and then it causes chronic diseases to form. Not in one day, not in one week, not even one year. I'm talking about a lifestyle. If you eat like an American, for years and years on years, that's a guaranteed way to make you fat and sick with diseases, period.
That's factually true. That's not my personal opinion. That's metabolically, physiologically factual in medicine. Hashtag science. Hashtag biochemistry. Go ahead and fact check what I've said. What I'm saying is empirically true, has axiomatic basis in empirical science on physiology, sports medicine, and nutrition. That's just real information what I gave you. It's also culturally wise. If you go to rural parts of India and look at what the grandparents eat, it's all fresh, natural, organic vegetables and spices that they grow locally. There's not, they don't buy anything in a colorful bag or box. And those people aren't sick with Western diseases. And if you go to the traditional Chinese diet, it's fresh vegetables with a little bit of meat and a small amount of rice. They're not eating bags of box or fast food or junk food or candy that just not part of the traditional culture there. But where they've adopted these Western processed and ultra processed food, they have an epidemic increase in diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, heart disease, and obesity. And that's just factually true. Thanks for watching. Consider clicking that subscribe button or that bell if you like this video. Otherwise, the next couple videos are gonna be about this injury on my hand. I accidentally dropped hot glue on there and it caused a third degree burn on my finger. And I'm documenting every day the healing process. Cheers, be well, and eat clean and healthy. You know how now. Bye.